Over this past month, the existential age-old war for control over humanity between the forces of light and the, the forces of darkness experienced one of its most epical battles in history with the forces of light achieving such a stunning victory, but has seen the Western media now blacklisting the results of one of the most consequential scientific experiments ever conducted and whose results have conclusively proved the existence of a communication link between human beings and their God. That's most commonly known as prayer. In order for you to be able to most fully comprehend the paradigm-shifting significance of what has occurred over these past few weeks, we have to travel back the late 18th century when what is known as the Industrial Revolution began to overtake humanity that began in Britain, but by the mid-1850s, began to stall out as the people tasked with running the machines, and having to become time slaves in order to do so, began to rebel as this mechanized way of life was destroying their families and whom factory owners couldn't pay enough money to in order to have their workers break their natural bonds with how God ordained the world to be. Knowing that the bonds between industrial workers and their faith in God had to be broken, the British government ordered the creation of a new paradigm that was composed by the English naturalist, geologist and biologist Charles Darwin using a potpourri of other people's research, and published, in 1859, under the title of On the Origin of Species and whose central scientific theory stated that populations evolve over the course of generations through a process of natural selection and described our world as nothing more than a never-ending battle of survival where only the strongest were able to survive. Immediately proclaiming that Darwin's dog-eat-dog -dog unproven theories were fact, the British government then ordered the compulsory education indoctrination of all of its children into this new paradigm antithetical to age-old religious beliefs of nature, home and family primacy and who were followed in doing so by the United States, and, eventually, the rest of the Western world. By the late 1880s, Darwin's unproven dog-eat-dog -dog world survival of the fittest theory began coming under serious attack with his most ardent opponent being Russian scientist Pyotr Alexeyevich Kropotkin who in a series of scientific essays, published between 1890-1896, stated that our world was based on mutually beneficial cooperation and reciprocity in both the animal kingdom and among human societies both past and present with these essays being published as a group, in 1902, under the title of Mutual Aid, A Factor of Evolution. Support for Kropotkin's theory that our entire world, and everything living in it, was a spiritually based system of mutual cooperation, as opposed to Darwin's theory of constant conflict, where only the strongest survived, came from one of the most unlikely of sources called the Cross Correspondences that were first published, in 1901, by the British based Society for Psychical Research that, since 1882, to the present day, is the world's oldest organization conducting scientific research of psychic and paranormal phenomena and whose findings pointed to a mysterious link underpinning all life that even survived past death. By the mid-1920s, a firm scientific basis underpinning both Kropotkin and the Society of Physical Research's cross-correspondence's spiritual basis for a world based on cooperation, rather than conflict came from no less than two of history's greatest Nobel Prize-winning theoretical physicists, Niels Bohr and Werner Heisenberg who, by 1927, formulated what is known as the Copenhagen Interpretation that forms the foundation of quantum physics' most astounding finding of spooky action at a distance showing that communication between the building blocks of life are not constrained by either time or distance. The Copenhagen interpretation is best understood by your knowing that all physical things, called matter, obey what are called classical rules, thus making them predictable to know about but that are all made up by atoms, electrons and molecules having rules no one is yet able to fully explain and whose existence and functions cannot even be proved to exist in our reality as they don't even exist until a human being views them thus meaning that reality itself is nothing more than an illusion. Even more bizarre. The particles that make up everything in the world, indeed the whole universe, and even your own body, once entangled with each other, and then separated, are able to communicate with each other instantaneously even if separated by the entire distance of the known universe and is known as the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox. 
The most important real-world consequence of the Einstein-Podolsky-Rosen paradox has been described the American biblical scholar Dr. Eric Elms who in his Quantum Prayer essay writes, Quantum physics has taught us that we are 99.9999% empty space, that what we are really seeing when we look out at the material world is massive concentrations of energy, bonded together in ways we haven't even begun to understand. In the realm of quantum physics we already have been able to measure a subtle effect known as quantum entanglement, the phenomenon where certain objects interact and become related to each other in such a way that even when separated by large distances they continue to share certain characteristics in common, even when those characteristics change. Einstein called it spooky action at a distance. When I think of praying for someone, I imagine it as a form of quantum entanglement. When we pray for each other, we become entangled with them, and them with us. Perhaps we all become entangled in God as well. With the forces of light racking up victory after victory since the forces of darkness began to spread the evilness of Darwin, in 1923, however, what is called the Frankfurt School struck back hard by spreading around the world what is known as cultural Marxism that, by the 1950s, began to overtake America whose history of was described by Dr. Jordan Peterson, a clinical psychologist and professor at the University of Toronto, as being a decades-long conspiracy handed down from French postmodernists to today's social justice warriors who intend to destroy rational meaning starting with enforced gender pronoun use and ending with the gulag pronoun enforcing Marxists and Jungian devouring mothers, a cabal that's created a culture of paralyzed man-children. The former Free Congress Foundation, likewise, warned that the origins of political correctness came directly from the Frankfurt School, with their goal being the creating of victim groups that would constitute the politically correct coalition needed to suppress religious and scientific thought altogether thus creating a society wholly dependent on government. To how successful the Frankfurt School has been in spreading its new Dark Age agenda can been seen in the results of a new study just published by the scientific journal Personality and Social Psychology Bullet entitled Religion as an Exchange System, the Interchangeability of God and Government in a Provider Role and whose findings revealed that people are more likely to drop religion in places where governments provide more services, and that not only applies to the United States, but other countries around the world too. Coinciding with this knowledge that people will trade their religious beliefs for government services was another document just produced by the American Nonpartisan Research and Policy Institute Center on Budget and Policy Priorities, titled The Federal Job Guarantee, a policy to achieve permanent full employment, that lays out a master plan for the United States to make all of its citizens employees of the central government that was quickly embraced by U.S. Senator Bernie Sanders who announced this week that he would soon unveil a federal jobs proposal that would guarantee every American worker a minimum $15 an hour position complete with health care, a retirement plan and the same paid leave benefits granted to federal public sector employees. Before the American people allow themselves to be turned into godless government slaves whose every thought and action will be dictated to them, though, they should first notice that two of the world's most prestigious scientific journals, Nature and Science, have released a combined five articles this past week bolstering the quantum god-human link hypothesis with one of the most important detailing how just conducted scientific experiments have confirmed the spooky action at distance. Quantum theory as being true. Equally as amazing for the forces of light as this quantum link being confirmed, is the newly published research book by Portuguese-American neuroscientist Dr. Antonio Damasio titled The Strange Order of Things life, feeling, and the making of cultures wherein he not only confirms Pieter Alexeeva Kropotkin's mutual aid discoveries that our world is based entirely on cooperation, not competition, he reveals that this truth extends to even the lowliest of bacteria that he discovered. Behave in a way that bears a striking resemblance to human social organization, thus leading him to state that the human unconscious literally goes back to early life forms, deeper and further than Freud or Jung ever dreamed of. As you are no doubt aware of, too, these remarkable forces of light revelations and victories for humanity are being blacklisted in the West, especially in America, whose leaders have as their only goal the complete and total subjugation of everyone under their control. We, on the other hand, know full well that should you, or anyone you know, 
allow themselves to be turned into a godless government slave, you'll be risking your eternal soul and as our Lord warned us all about in the book of Matthew, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You can't serve both God and mammon. Our entire world is full of delusional hate today, you know that, but I encourage each and every one you to immediately turn away from the Antichrist false doctrine of Darwin and remember in the deepest part of your being that we were all born to cooperate with each other and as the wise words of Ecclesiastes guide us, two are better than one because they have a good return for their labor. For if either of them falls, the one will lift up his companion. But woe to the one who falls when there is not another to lift him up. Furthermore, if two lie down together they keep warm, but how can one be warm alone? So as I leave you today, please keep in your remembrances that me and my dear sisters are lying down cold tonight because you won't join us we've cooperated with you by sharing the truths that we know you need, but still you fail to cooperate with us by giving us the support we need and it's so little that we ask of you too. Just a small pittance you'll not even know is gone from your purse within a week but can make a world of difference to us and our mission for you, if only you open your heart with God. Sister Sierra, Dublin, Ireland, April 27, 2018